Thank you. If anything uh, is to happen at all, it has to be a team effort, doesn't it? So uh, it's, uh, to quote the Musketeers, all for one and one for all. We're doing it together. Let me, we've heard a lot this, uh, this today, and the last thing that I want to do is crowd yet more thinking onto you. I want to leave you simply with some concluding thoughts, which essentially, as you'll see where I'm going with this, is what are you going to do with what you've heard? And then I want us to turn back to the Lord. So this is going to be brief. But I wonder whether we can have the uh, Lawrence of Arabia quote up. Famous quote, which many of you will be familiar with, but it uh, does you no harm to be reminded of it. All men dream, but not all equally. Those who dream by night in dusty recesses of their mind wake to find it was all vanity. But the dreamers of the day, they're different. They are dangerous. For they may act their dreams with open eyes and make things happen. And of course, today is worthwhile if, as a result of it, action comes from it. I was at a wedding uh, a while ago now. We were queuing to get into the dining room for the reception. And uh, there were sort of you know, adult bodies squeezed like this, small space. And then there was a, I guess she was probably seven or eight, little girl, sort of this height. And you know how they can get places that we can no longer get? And she sort of shimmied through and made her way to the front. And as she passed me, I looked down, and the guy behind me, who was probably 10 years my senior, he also looked down, and we saw this red pair of shiny shoes, all sequins and sort of fabulous things. And I said to and and you look down and you see the red shoes, and then you see my black shoes and his black shoes. And I said to him, maybe we should try some of those sometime. <laughs> and he said... Uh, he made some sort of derogatory comment. I said, oh, I said, where's the adventurer in you? And he said, he said, the adventurer in me died some time ago. I hope that the adventurer in you is still alive and well. Because that's the point of today. Where do adventures start? Adventures start with people like Luther stumbling upstairs, pulling on something, and suddenly he finds that a neighborhood is awake as a result it starts with something in our hearts and as Oz said earlier Luther didn't strategize for the reformation and we can't strategize for a movement a movement start with life and life starts in your heart but once life is in your heart and once the Spirit of God has whispered things in your heart then it does no harm to employ some of the ways of thought that Oz, Oz was referring to when he said all truth is God's truth, as long as it's made in submission to Scripture under the leadership of the Spirit of God with the life of God having generated the whole process, it can prove useful. So in, and I promise you, not many minutes, three, four, five minutes, I want to just reflect on a few things that Noah did when he stumbled across a huge project. Because I guess for some of you, there's huge projects and it's, it's huge for you. You may say, well, it's little, but it's just big for me. Noah was told to build an ark. You understand how big that ark would have been? You know, the length of the ark was or is the height of the London Eye, if you passed it recently. So it was a huge construction. The height of the ark was the same height as the pillars outside the British Museum. The width of the ark was about from the back to the screen. That was the width of the thing. So you imagine a man with no experience, not near any water and with no tools, was asked to make that sort of size arc. And if we had time, we could go into all the theological pictures of it being a boat of salvation. She'll have to leave for another time. What did Noah have to do when God had put an ark in his heart? What do you have to do with the dreams, with the things that are just starting to bubble away in your heart and mind? Number one, I suggest that Noah got a clear picture of what he was going to build. Any, uh, any construction man will, or woman will tell you that. What happens if you try and build an ark without knowing what it looks like first? You'll never get the windows in. You'll never get the door shut which is pretty bad news if you've labored to put the whole thing together till that point in time. I want to suggest that there is great value in getting a big picture of what God might be putting in your heart. Because until you've got a big picture, it's hard to know how to work back and start the construction. 
And once we've got that big picture, the next question is, what is your role in the process? You know what Christian's number one mistake is when we start to get involved with art building? We all assume that we're the man or the woman. We all assume that we're the one to head it, name it, and headline for it. And yet, of course, we're a body. Even King David got that one wrong. He had a temple in his heart, so he assumed he was the one to build it. Actually, he was the one to prepare for it. As Oz said, he went to the grave not having seen what was in his heart. So what is your contribution? Imagine Noah saying to Ham, Shem, Japheth, and they're all, they all coming and saying, we'll all do the same thing. I mean, there's only four of them. They need some diversification right now. What's your contribution? It's the team that you need to work with. So Noah would have had to get a clear picture. He'd need to work out his part in the process, and then he would have needed to create a plan. That's not in opposition to prayer and listening to the Lord. They both go together. He gives us a spirit and he gives us a heart, a mind. How many people here didn't plan for their wedding? Anybody? Did somebody else plan for your wedding or did you just make it up? <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, we've got one person in the room and it just happened. <laughs> Everyone else planned for their wedding? There's always one, you know, in every room, there's always one. <laughs> how many of us go on holiday? How many of us are planning to go on holiday this summer, but, ha but we'll make no plans before we go? There's always one. I'm just waiting for them. You get my point. My point is this. When we do things that matter, we plan ahead of time. My encouragement to you as you think through some of the implications of today is to ask these sorts of questions. Where am I right now? What particular steps do I need to take to do the things the Lord has put in my heart? When do I need to do them by and what other resources do I need? And listen, don't get stuck out of a sense of inadequacy. As John Haggai, who wrote years ago, Attempt something so great that it is doomed to failure unless God is in it. Attempt something so great. My observation is most people don't attempt because they just think it's just beyond me. You know what the great artist Pablo Picasso said? He said, I'm always doing things I can't do. That's how I get things done. In other words, there was something of the confidence that he had in his heart which just said, it's got to be done, I'm going to do it. And you find out along the way, you don't always know all the answers before you start. Sometimes you have to work some of them out along the way. Some of them become clear as you set out under the Spirit of God. I suspect when Paul started on his church planting journeys, he didn't know exactly how he was going to do it. I imagine Paul and Bar Barnabas would have said to him, how are we going to do it? And we read the book backwards, so we know what happens. But Paul didn't. I suspect Paul said, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll go and God's told us to do it and we'll allow him to show us. So get a clear picture of the completed product, project. Work out your part in the process and create a plan. Maybe we could have the band back, please. It was Dante who said this. He said, a mighty flame follows a tiny spark. My prayer, some people have said to me all day, are you happy with today? How's it going? How do you think it's going? I'm like, if there's lots of tiny sparks that develop into mighty flames, then it's been a great day. If there's no sparks and no flames, then it was okay. But it was just okay. In other words, actually, the litmus test of today is not today. It's what happens beyond today. And so we want to give a bit of time before we're done to returning to our maker and creator. And we want to spend a little while worshipping him and we're going to spend a short while praying. We're going to ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's been with us all day. But the thing about the incarnation is it shows that God loves to be some places particularly at particular times. We're going to ask him to be particularly here again and have an opportunity to pray a little bit as the Holy Spirit leads 
before we're done. 